up, aliens? It's Big Al. Welcome to another Dumb Sports Show. Draft Day has come and gone. I loved every minute of it. I watched the whole thing, every pick. It was great. Um, some surprises, some not so surprises. Let's get into it. I'm not gonna go pick by pick, but I'll like talk about the the surprising ones. <clears throat> Actually, let's go pick by pick. I just won't comment on everything. Um, first and foremost, before the draft even started. Roger Goodell is such a goddamn weirdo. He was like, I don't know. It was painful to watch the the first part when he brings out the chair. He's talking about how like the fans are going to sit in the chair while he's reading the pick. And he thought it was some big deal because he sat in that chair last year during COVID. I was like, it wasn't. I mean, he was acting like he was trying to be an MC or a hype man. And it was just awful. He has no personality. Like, <laughs> he might have the worst personality of all time just zero personality anyway that was like the weirdest part of the draft was just that first part it was just roger goodell being such a freaking weirdo all right let's get into it trevor lawrence no surprises jacksonville zach wilson no surprises the jets hilarious video came out he was hanging out with like um some skillies i think it was like jamar chase maybe the bama receivers and they were throwing up, like, gang signs, and they were throwing up, like, they were just acting like, I don't know, they are just acting like themselves. Zach Wilson, like, looks so uncomfortable next to them. And all the captions and all the comments and the tweets and everything were hilarious. They were like, oh, I'm not in Provo anymore. I mean, it was, <laughs> he just looked so uncomfortable. He's going to walk into the New York Jets locker room, just be the most uncomfortable person of all time. It's going to be fantastic. They're going to be drinking, smoking, they're going to do all this stuff around him, and he's just going to be freaking out. It's going to be great. He needs to find a church of Latter-day Saints in New Jersey. Yeah, they're in New Jersey. So Trey Lance, I got this right in my mock. Not my mock that I blogged, but the mock that I was like in a contest for. Pat McAfee came out and said he had sources that Trey Lance was the guy at three. And I had Mac Jones like for the longest time, but it ended up being Trey Lance. Kind of a surprise. But Trey Lance goes to San Francisco. Supposedly that was everyone's guy except Shanahan. Shanahan like Mac Jones, but I think they made the right call on Trey Lance. I sit behind Jimmy G. Jimmy G is bound to get hurt real soon, and then you got Trey Lance there. That's that's not a bad move. That team almost won the Super Bowl two years ago. So um, adding Trey Lance, probably pretty smart. Jimmy G's bound to get hurt. Um, Kyle Pitts kind of knew that. I mean that's that's cool. The Falcons' offense is Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley. Um, Kyle Pitts now, Todd Gurley, Matt Ryan. They're still probably going to get rid of Julio Jones, but for now, it's sick. This one, the Bengals have to be the dumbest franchise of all time. Reuniting Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow is kind of cool. This was like a draft of reunions, like where college quarterbacks got their, their receivers back, I guess. Um, but, I mean... Why you gotta protect Joe Burrow here? You absolutely have to protect Joe Burrow here. They just took pictures in their new new uniforms. Joe Burrow came out with the gnarliest scar on his knee, and he's sitting down trying to look like a king, but he's got this massive ten inch scar on his knee. And you guys sit here and take Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase isn't gonna protect that guy. He's gonna be a weapon for sure. He's probably the best receiver in the draft. But you gotta protect Burrow. Like I am baffled. I, I thought this was a possibility, but like I was like, there's no way. They gotta protect Joe Burrow. They gotta protect Joe Burrow. He's running for his life last year, taking unnecessary shots. Season ended when he was rolled up on by a D lineman or a, his own lineman that got pushed back into him. I thought Penesa will for sure given guaranteed lock it up. But they reunite Jamar Chase. Great receiver. I think they're gonna be great together on slants and quick outs, probably. I don't know if he's gonna have time to do anything else. Jalen Waddle, Miami, that was cool. Um, not really a lot to say there. I thought Jamar Chase in Miami. Um, Panay Soto of the Lions, that's kind of a good addition. I thought for sure they'd go receiver just because they lost Kenny Galladay. I literally can't name one receiver on – they lost Marvin Jones. I can't name one receiver on the Lions. And they got Jared Goff, who's actually a decent quarterback. Like, why wouldn't you go get a weapon? You have <coughs> – who's the running back? DeAndre Swift. You have a running back, DeAndre Swift. Go get a weapon for, especially picking seven. There were so many good receivers this year. But, I mean, they solidify the offensive line, so that's good. Um, 
J.C. Horn was probably the big first big, big surprise of the draft. J.C. Horn to Carolina. Um, I mean, it's kind of cool. They must really love Darnold. I mean, I'm more USC hat. I'm a big Darnold fan. But they, they're they sold on Darnold. They sold, and they sent Teddy Bridgewater to the Broncos. And then they um, draft J.C. Horn. So it's Darnold or nothing. They're backups. I think uh, P.J. Walker from the, um, the XFL. So, I mean, Darnold or nothing. Go for it. I mean... Give him a season, and then if you're a top 10 pick again next year, you take a quarterback. Another USC guy, Keaton Slowis, probably. Um, Patrick Sertan of the Broncos, that's kind of cool. Definitely expected the Panthers and the Broncos to take quarterbacks, but oh, they, more, they know more than I do. And the Broncos are going to stick with Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater. <laughs> That'll be an awesome combination. Um, Devontae Smith to the Eagles. I mocked this one, not really surprised. You know what sucks is I did this contest with a bunch of my friends where you pick the first round of the NFL draft on NFL.com and what total bullshit this is because I mocked Devontae Smith to the Eagles at 12 and if you get the pick correct at the right spot, it's 100 points. If you get it within like one spot, it's 50 points. And if you get it within two spots, it's 20 points. So I had him going to the Eagles at 12. But they traded up to get him at 10. So I went from getting 100 points to getting 20 points, which is total bullshit. I should get credit for that. Everyone agrees with me. I should get credit for that. This was probably the biggest... I mean, not a surprise, but this was great for an organization that has success trading up for quarterbacks. The Bears trade all the way up from 20 to 11 to get Justin Fields. I mean, that's great for them. It sucks for Andy Dalton, who they said he was QB1. They tweeted out the picture of Andy Dalton, QB1. Nick Foles is probably gone. Um, Justin Fields is going to do wonders for that organization, so that's kind of cool. I hope the Bears kind of like come back and start being good again. I know they made the playoffs last year, but I mean, if they had Justin Fields, Allen Robinson, Montgomery's a running back. Um, they have like 10 tight ends on their roster. I'm excited to see Justin Fields play in the NFL, though. I was hoping he'd fall further and further, and then the Steelers would just trade up for him eventually, but... I mean, the Bears were all over that. Um, Micah Parsons to Dallas. I feel like they draft linebackers all the time. They drafted Jalen Smith. They drafted Leighton Vander Esch. I know Sean Lee just retired. But then they go uh, Micah Parsons, who's one of the best, probably the best defensive player in the draft. So um, they for sure needed to go defense. The Cowboys defense was trash last year. Rayshon Slater to the Chargers. That's not a surprise. Um, Jets trade up for Elijah Vera Tucker. Congrats, USC. Bite on baby. Another first round pick for USC. Even though Alabama had freaking six this year. That's insane. Mac Jones to the Patriots. I don't know how, why. I think I had Mac Jones going like nine to the Broncos. But Mac Jones to the Patriots just makes sense. Like, I don't know how I didn't see this coming. This is the like the idiot freaking. Like, I didn't get this right. I had them picking JC Horn. Of course he went eight and Mac Jones slid. So he just fell into Bill Belichick's lap. Didn't have to trade for anything. Cam Cam Newton, Mac Jones. Cam Newton has been pretty injury prone. So Mac Jones is going to get a shot for sure this year. Probably the biggest surprise of the whole draft was the Cardinals taking Zayvon Collins at 16. You got Isaiah Simmons last year. Buda Baker is there. J.J. Watt, Chandler Jones. Offense is pretty solid. I was like, they have to go corner Caleb Farley to replace Patrick Peterson. But they went Zayvon Collins, who was projected like 25th and later. He goes 16, so, I mean, good for him, I guess. That defense should be sick. If Isaiah Simmons starts playing where he got drafted, they get drafted number nine last year. If he starts playing to the level where he got drafted, then that defense is going to be killer. And this one cracks me up because if you followed any of my mocks, every time the Raiders came up at 17, I was always like, the Raiders fucking love drafting Alabama players and they drafted Alex Leatherwood so high just so high <laughs> he was projected a second rounder for a lot of people mid second round they drafted him at 17 left tackle for Alabama they need I mean yeah he's not gonna play left tackle they have Colton Miller but um I mean <laughs> it's crazy man crazy um Jalen Phillips to the Dolphins. I had that one just because he went to Miami. I was like, oh, they could use a defensive guy. Uh, Hameen Davis, is that his name? Hameen Davis, linebacker going to Washington. Um, Washington's defense actually gets better. They, that was probably their strong suit last year. Their offense sucked. Alex Smith only threw for like 120 yards a game. But um, 
I mean, that's solid right there. Kadarius Tony was probably one of the biggest reaches. Aside from Alex Leatherwood, Kadarius Tony was a pretty high reach. The Giants traded nine spots back to take a receiver way too early, making zero sense to me. They're not Bengals dumb, but they're still kind of dumb for this. I mean, you were at 11. Devontae Smith was available. If you were thinking receiver, like Devontae Smith, oh, no, the Eagles traded it for him. That's right. I mean, I guess there were no receivers really taken in the teens. Devontae Smith goes to 10. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. Why wouldn't you focus on defense or offensive line? Plenty of great offensive linemen available. I think Slater and um, Elijah Vera Tucker were available. You drafted first round tackle last year, but he didn't really like, he wasn't amazing. Um, the, uh, what is it? The Kadarius Tony, man. You got, so you've got Kenny Galladay, you just signed. You've got Kyle Rudolph, you just signed. You've got Evan Ingram, great pass catcher. Saquon Barkley, Slayton, and Sterling Shepard. So it's not a bad skill group, but then you go and go way too high on a receiver, a quick little speed guy. Yeah, not my favorite move. Kind of dumb on the Giants' part. Colts get Quiddy Pay. That's cool. Uh, he was, um, I think he was a refugee from Guinea. So that's kind of cool. Um, good story there. Caleb Farley going. Car Farley. Caleb Farley going to Tennessee. This was like the saddest thing I've seen all week because Caleb Farley tested po Farley. Let's do it again. Caleb Farley tested positive for COVID. I think this morning. And he legit had to watch himself get drafted by himself. Literally watching himself get drafted by himself in a room, just staring at the TV. I was like, they put a camera on him too. I was like, this is the saddest shit I've ever seen. The happiest moment of this kid's life. He's not celebrating with anyone. He's just sitting there staring at the TV. I mean, poor guy. I hope he gets better soon. He had the back surgery, so that's why he fell so far. He would have gone way farther um, without these stupid surgeries. Christian Darisaw, good for the Vikings getting a... Um, this guy would have been available way up there where they were at. They traded the, with the Jets at 14. Um, he They could have got him at 14, but they trade back and actually get him at 23. So, well done. Najee Harris to the Steelers. I'm really excited about this. Um, we definitely needed a running back. Offensive line would have been good here too, but there wasn't like – no one was really available. If Darisaw would have fell one more spot, I could have seen us taking Christian Darisaw instead of um, Najee Harris. But I'm glad we have – Another Steeler great running back named Harris following the great Franco. Um, I, I'm just excited. I hope we show up our offensive line with our next pick. But um, Najee Harris, baby, let's go. Travis Etienne to the Jaguars. This is one of my least favorite picks. Um, I mean, I've been very vocal about being against the Bengals pick and the Giants pick. But I feel like you got Trevor Lawrence. A running back isn't like the craziest weapon to a... A quarterback. I mean, it helps having a run game, but getting a, a receiver here, and you had the Ole Miss receiver, Elijah Moore, you had Rashawn Bateman, you had these guys that were studs there. Terrace Marshall was still there. You had stud receivers at 25, or possibly an O line, so you don't burrow this kid with a 10 inch scar on his knee. And they trade, they take Travis Etienne, which is like a reunion of um, Clemson guys, was Travis Etienne and um, Trevor Lawrence. I mean, it could work, but they have James Robinson, too, so that also doesn't make sense. Greg Newsom to the Browns. This one's, I mean, they saw a hole. They filled it. I thought they'd go linebacker for sure, but no one really fell that far. Um, I had Hameen, Her Hameen Davis or um, Zayvon Collins. They both like went in the teens, so, I mean, good pick for the Browns. They didn't really have any weak spots. Um, Rashad Bateman to the uh, Ravens. I don't know. This guy just has, like, Rashad Perriman vibes to me. It's like, I don't know. I don't think he's going to be that good. His, his tape looked good. I watched his highlights after he got drafted. I mean, he looked better than I thought he was going to be. I mixed I mixed him up with Rondale Moore from Purdue. Rondale Moore was like this guy from Purdue's 5'7", like 146 pounds. And I was like, Jesus. I don't even – I don't think I was ever 146 pounds. That's wild. Um, so I probably mixed them up. But I think Rashad Bateman's kind of like Rashad Perriman. Um, Saints get Peyton Turner. Literally, verbal meme. Me, Connor McGregor, I was like, who the fuck is that guy? Peyton Turner, I'd never heard of that guy. I guess the Saints are getting pass rushers from Houston, I guess. Never heard of him. This <laughs> this is my all-time favorite maybe draft pick. Outside of the Steelers picks, this is my all-time favorite draft pick because this morning, 
it comes out, Adam Schefter tweets out that Aaron Rodgers is extremely unhappy with the Packers, and he told everyone in the Packers organization that he didn't want to be there. And you know what they did? I tweeted this out. I was like, if the Packers don't go receiver here, then Aaron Rodgers is as good as gone. And they took this attitude, we do not negotiate with terrorists. And <laughs> they straight up drafted a corner. Zero weapons for Aaron Rodgers. They have one offensive draft pick in the last nine or ten years. They usually go defense first. Um, the last nine or ten years, their only offensive draft pick was last year when they drafted Jordan Love. They traded up to get Jordan Love in the first round. Just the biggest slaps in the face to Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he can go anywhere and make that team instantly a, a contender. Um, it sucks. Like th- literally 30, not 30, maybe 28, 27 teams should be interested in Aaron Rodgers. The Steelers, I would love to have Aaron Rodgers. That won't ever happen, but um, send him. Greg Russo to the Bills. That's a good pick. I mean, make that defense better. Jason Owe to the Ravens. That's the guy that had zero sacks. That's crazy that, I mean, safeties get sacks. Linebackers get sacks. Corners get a sack every once in a while. This dude's a pass rusher and didn't get a single sack last year. That's, I mean, his measurables are off the charts, but just, I mean, you got you to gotta get half a sack. You got to get something. Zero sacks? Like, I don't know. People are like, he can't finish, blah, blah, blah. He's he's beating all those people, but the quarterbacks are getting rid of the ball fast. I mean, say what you got to say. All right. Um, and then the Buccaneers literally needing nothing go with Joe Tryon. So, I mean, that's that's the draft. That's the first round. I'll watch more tomorrow. But, I mean, it was exciting. I loved every minute of it. It was awesome. The Packers had the the moment of the draft when they drafted Eric Stokes. I was like, if they have any interest in keeping Aaron Rodgers, they'll get a receiver here, and they'll kind of, like, calm down this fire that's burning inside of him. Nope. <laughs> Cornerback. <laughs> Literally never drafting him any weapons. And then the Bengals just, I mean, the AFC North is just going to feast on Joe Burrow for years to come, and I love it. Talk about reunions, like Jalen Waddell re- reunited with Tua, Devontae Smith reunited with Jalen Hurts, um, Travis Etienne reunited with Trevor Lawrence, um, what was the other one? It was uh, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase. I mean, these are these are good. I like the the reunions because I mean, people have chemistry, people have relationships, people have trust. I mean, that's good. That's all good stuff. That's I think that's all the notes I had. Looking at my notes again, it just says Roger Goodell is a goddamn weirdo. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Round two tomorrow. I probably won't do a video. I mean, I'll probably recognize like three or four names in round two. But um, this is one of my favorite days of the year. OJ went out and tweeted, this is third favorite football day of the year. So, um, yep, OJ is the best follow on Twitter. So, go follow OJ Simpson on Twitter right now if you're not. It's literally my favorite thing in the world. All right, thanks, guys. Love always. Remember, Iowa sucks. No first-round picks. Bunch of bitches.